Okay, we're back, we're back. So, weathering. Let's talk weathering. So what I've done so far is I've done an acrylic wash, which I've rubbed off for the most part, but it certainly left uh, the, the, the paintwork a little duller, and obviously I've left some residue around to indicate dirt and, and general filth. I've added some um, streaks on the on the top of the uh, on on the top of the roof on the black, uh, so that you know it, it looks like it's kind of bashed through some vegetation and stuff. You can see uh, get them in the light. You can see some on the roof there, the top corner. So that's the kind of thing I've done. Uh, the windows you saw in the last video have been uh, sort of misted around. The front, it's the same on the other side. So this kind of acrylic wash. I've also done the panel lines in a little bit more. Let's just spin it around here so you can see this side. There's more panels on this side. So they're all a bit more obvious. The hinges I've tried to bring out uh, and, and then so forth. So that's if you like phase one as far as I'm concerned. Um, look, I've even got some uh, some water streaks on, on, on the back side here. So this is phase one. Uh, let me just sort my fingers out. Phase two is going to be highlighting. So you 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 run in the dark, and then you're going to bring out the edges with some highlight. Uh, what I've started doing, I did have a plan. I did have a plan to sand away some of the red to reveal the silver underneath. Now, to be honest with you, that is quite a big job, and I'm not convinced that I'm up for it. Because if it goes wrong, it's going to be spectacularly horrid. So. I can't bring myself to do it. I'm very happy with how things are going and I'm not prepared to screw it up by some fancy new technique uh, idea that I've, I've concocted. Plus, going over things with sandpaper is not a terribly precise science. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that that's going to be a good plan. I might try that on a rig of my own, I think. That would be fairer. Now, what I'm also, what I've started doing instead is, is kind of haven't given up on the whole idea of, of silver underneath, is I've just started looking at the back here as to what, what am I going to do to, to highlight all of this. So what I've started doing is do a little bit of sanding to bring out some of these. But with the sanding, there's a lot of red behind this as well. So what I'm starting to get is a lot of red come through. Uh, as well as or instead of the silver so and then with the sandpaper you don't it's not a very precise thing so what I've started doing is using the knife blade so I thought I'd show you just how, how this kind of brings it to life so if I just scrape that away you can see the black come off and then you see the, the silver come through yeah I'll try to stop it as soon as it's come through there it is so you can see there's a little bit of red on there as well so now I can just carefully pick away at the red and the red should go as the silver's under under the red. So I just need to get rid of the bit of red just so it doesn't tint it and kind of make it look a bit pinky. Mm -hmm. ah, messages are pouring in as well. Yeah, it's not, not great light for showing you this stuff, but you can see it there. There's a, come on, why is the camera taking the day off? There you go. Can you see it there now? So, I'm going to do a little bit more of that. I've done I've done bits of it here and there. So I'm going to work my way around, probably around the grill and, and these hinges, and just do that with it. Um, I'm, I'm, I've started doing a little bit on the red. So I've started doing a little bit here, you see. And okay, it might go through to the white sometimes. I don't even think this had silver on it, to be honest. Um, but the, the, the good, I, good thing about having the white originally is that it doesn't really matter whether it's white or silver you can't really tell it's just a highlight so that, that works just as well so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to rip around with the blade on some of these edges some of these might be a little bit hard because they're not very pronounced so maybe there'll be some paint applied uh, as, as a necessity but um that's what we're doing up to now okay so until the rest of the truck is put together, I'm going to call this uh, a wrap. I'm going to call this weathered and done. So what have I done to it particularly? Um, I did the acrylic wash, as I think I said before. Uh, I have then gone around with the scalpel and cut away some of the colours. As I was mentioning before, the sandpaper may be not quite so precise, but using a knife blade, I've cut away quite a lot of the uh, red paint and the black paint, which has uh, has has... You know, produced these these 
you know, bare edges. Um, which I'm going to wait until I see it in daylight. Maybe I've done too much. Actually, I must get some. Uh, must tidy this bit up a little bit with some thinners. Um, so I've got quite a lot of that going on. I've also then I've also stained this because these are the exhaust vents for the engine. I have also um, just kind of gone around with with some um, silver aluminium paint to just do some more highlights uh, of a more gentle nature. Not too many though because I don't want it uh, over the, over the top. So we've got some raised edges on here now and some of the hinge detail is done. The bumper, I kind of wish I'd, uh, I'd, I'd melted this, you know, before I painted it so I get some dints in it, but I didn't. So it is what it is. It's it's done quite rough. I've put some scratches in as well just to uh, give the impression, obviously, these things do get rubbed up against rocks and the like. So uh, there's that sort of thing going on. But overall, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm quite pleased with it. It's a little bit like mine in terms of its overall level of grub. But uh, there, there are obviously some quite significant differences, not least of all being the colour. Uh, I also, just as a little, because I can't leave anything undone, uh, I've replaced, well, I've made up a little handle there. It's not very good. This is a bit of fuse wire. Um, and I put a little... Um, suspension bracket uh, you know kind of uh, you put them in on, on, on shocks to uh, increase the preload when it fits the little coke can or I thought it did it might do I might glue that in it's not glued at the moment so it's got a little drinks holder and a handle a makeshift handle to uh, close his door with Right, so here's the panel that I've done. Apologies, I can't see the phone screen, so I'm having to keep looking to see, make sure you guys can see it. Um, so this is the one I've done on the inside. Uh, it's, so it's got like a dusty brown uh, wash. And as you see, I mean exactly that, a wash. So what I'm using is, um, I'm using Tamiya, <laughs> there you go, Tamiya flat brown. Uh, there's barely any left, to be honest with you. Uh, and I just decant it into a little mixing pot, a little plastic pot here. And I water it down a little bit with some water, not surprisingly. And I take my brush and I just paint it on. Uh, so, a little bit of damp, damp cloth, not wet, don't want water all over the place, it's just, just a damp cloth. And then we can start. So you can see it's damp and you can see what it does. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so just a little uh, a little look at what I'm doing here. Let me try try it with a lamp on as well. That'd be a bit easier, wouldn't it? Um. So what I'm doing is I'm just going around to taking some of the red paint off with my knife. I did do this piece with the some sandpaper, largely. Okay, so I've largely sanded away at various parts of it to make um, like this some some abrasion marks and stuff which I quite like the trouble is it obviously takes the acrylic off as well um, because the, the sandpaper is a little bit damp so what I've decided to do with the the, the other panels is, is less of that and more uh, taking paint off with the knife which obviously doesn't doesn't get in the way of the other stuff um, so hopefully we'll have I think what we're gonna actually end up with is these panels and you maybe make them out um, compare these two then maybe just slightly different colors because this one's had a bit more sandpaper put on it so it the, the finish has been disturbed and moved around a bit more than the other two uh, sides so you know that's pretty cool it'll be it'll be a slightly different tone um so really like i said i'm not not going to use a lot of paint i'm not going to add a lot of paint to this i'm, I'm more interested in, in in concentrating on taking paint off so, excuse me, so um, yeah, I'm going to just, you know, it's, it's a fairly straightforward process, just very carefully just take away some of the red to reveal either the silver underneath uh, or white, you know, or light grey. If I go all the way through to the plastic, it's light grey anyway, so it's not really going to matter wh whether it's the silver bit or the, the light grey bit. Um, I think after the wash, the uh, salting parts have come up really nice because they... It's taken a lot of the shine out of them, balanced the whole thing a little bit. 
Um, so anyway, what am I doing? So you can compare maybe this. Um, yeah, you can maybe compare that hinge to that one, which I haven't worked on yet. So this one's a bit more, um, a bit, little bit less well defined, a little bit less um, worn. So I'm just working my way across. So obviously I'm chipping away at the at the these rope cleats because obviously the, these will get a, a fair bit of use and a fair bit of um, paint removed from them over time. It's very difficult to do uh, to not do them all the same uh, when they're all they're all lined up here and especially when I'm watching the TV, watching the you know watching them show on the phone. It's kind of uh, it, it's hard to you just kind of get in the swing of doing them all the same. Uh, which obviously wouldn't do because they're not still doesn't wear the same you know just because it's lined up next to each other it doesn't have to wear exactly the same way um so so yeah the, the, the danger with doing this kind of stuff is is really that you do too much and with this kind of technique you really have to be very careful because you, you can't really put it back uh, the, the acrylic I can take off, I can wash it all off, I'll scrub it off uh, largely anyhow and then and then start again but with the, I'm getting all over my fingers, uh, with the um, with this kind of scraping away of paint you, you know you really kind of can't put it back on so what I'm doing is I'm doing a fair bit and then I'm going to look at it in the morning because under daylight is where you'll really see this work or not work and um, obviously the artificial light can make it look bit too much because it's reflecting when you get in the daylight um, it, it looks quite different so I don't want to go over the top with this um, you, you can always you can always do more uh, but you can't you can't put it back uh, without respraying the whole kit and caboodle which would obviously be something of a, a disaster so um, what I'm also trying to do is maybe just on occasion just not not just follow the line you know so we just try and replicate, you know, just a chunk has been taken out there. So it's not quite the same as salting. It's not quite as defined as salting. Uh, and I, I still prefer salting as, as, as the way of doing it. But um, I, I do still quite like the idea of, of, of something rubbing, um, which, which is where the sandpaper -y kind of technique would come in. Um, you know, if there was a rope off here, and it, you could just say it was always kept hanging off these this hoop that it would rub and you might end up with some a rub mark down here you could you could do the like i said on the earlier video is build a story a lot of this stuff has to have a story you know um if you're going to make specific marks it's nice to have something there to explain why the mark is there um, but we'll uh, maybe we'll come to that if i can think of something suitable Trying to think of something suitable, so just it's also a good technique because it, it it just brings things to life a little bit when you've got everything's pretty much one color. It's nice to just be able to just make something pop out a little bit, um, which is uh, you know it's, it's a good way of doing that. But like I say, the main the main thing is just not to overdo it, um, and then you can always come back. You know, and Terry can always do some of this when he when he's you know, if he feels at some point he wants to change things up a little bit. Hell, we can always respray it again, but I'd rather not. It's getting to the point where there's a bit too much paint on it. But he could always he could always take uh, t take a knife to it and, and start weathering it a bit more. Um, add his own stories. You know, that's something I'll talk to him about. Is is creating a story. Um, well, one of the things I wanted to do, which I, I'm rambling a bit, but one of the things I wanted to do is um, I thought about putting some uh, decals on, like like, it, like maybe it was a fire truck or something, and, and have put some lettering on, put the acrylic wash over, and then take the letters off. So there'd be like a, a pristine red, uh, you know, f f the word fire written on, something like that. Uh, so it, it was as if... You know, you know, it's like when you see these decommissioned vans and trucks and things like a UBS van um, and they, they've taken the, the sign writing off. You've got this kind of mint paintwork underneath. So I quite fancy doing that. But uh, again, just one of those things. 
um, didn't quite get, uh, didn't quite make it. But there's, there's, you know, one truck one day will have that sort of thing. So I'm gonna perhaps say that that. I think that would be a reasonable. It looks a reasonable kind of match. Um, there we go. It looks a reasonable match in terms of weathering and colour and general stuff. Oh, okay. Well, it's half ten. I think it's filthy, and I'm succumbing to the cold. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, maybe we'll wrap the weathering uh, process video up now. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you uh, for what I hope would be the last one. We'll have a look at the load bed and then it'll all get bolted together and you'll see the end product. All right. Thanks, guys.